During the 2016 presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton asked, do we want his fingers near the button? He being President Donald Trump and the button being the button, what's known as the nuclear football, that launches America's nuclear warheads. Clinton was asking if the people of America wanted Trump in command of the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. That has over 1,000 times the destructive force of what was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Although the president's nuclear ambitions can be described nothing of short of being maverick, the president asked in an interview, if somebody hits us within ISIS, you wouldn't fight back with a nuke? Trump was also caught saying, if we have them, why can't we use them? Every president since John F. Kennedy has been equipped with a nuclear biscuit and a nuclear football. The nuclear biscuit is a sheet of plastic that has codes on it that the president needs to access the nuclear arsenal of the United States. The nuclear football is only used by the president of the United States, and its job is to authorise a nuclear attack when away from a fixed location like the White House's operations room. The president is supposed to be carrying the nuclear biscuit at all times, though there have been reports that in 1970 that 39th president Jimmy Carter actually lost his biscuit when a suit was sent to the dry cleaners. General Hugh Shelton was the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staffs. At the time, he wrote in his memoir that the codes were missing for months. One of Clinton's former military aides, Lieutenant Cole Robert Buzz Patterson, recalled the morning after Monica Lewinsky's sex scandal broke, he asked the president for the card that, so that he could go and get an updated version of it. The president couldn't find it. According to Patterson's memoir, Clinton told him that they were upstairs, but after a thorough search, the president admitted that he had lost them. This was a worrying time for humanity, because it's only when someone at the Pentagon's nuclear launch offices hear the codes for the nuclear um, arsenal, do they know that it's not a Trump impersonator or someone who isn't the president. As for the nuclear football, it only comes into service when the president leaves the White House. It is nicknamed the nuclear football because it is a large leather aluminium framed briefcase weighing 20 kilos, which is heaved by a military aide who shadows the US commander in chief. It is also the ultimate device to end the world wrapped up in a briefcase. Over the years there have been several nuclear footballs manufactured for the White House by Utah firm Zero Halley Burton that have also supplied aluminium cases for the movies such as Men in Black 2, Air Force One and Dude Where's My Car. The nuclear football came into service in 1962 after the Cuban Missile Crisis, after President Kennedy worried about how the nuclear launch officers at the Pentagon would be sure that it was the President authorising the strike. Now long after the Cold War, the briefcase still follows the President everywhere he goes. There is in fact three nuclear footballs, one for the President, one for the Vice President, and one that is kept in storage in the White House. Luckily, nothing catastrophic has come as a con consequence of someone dropping the ball, but that doesn't mean there haven't been any fumbles. Peter Metzger, a former Marine who was one of the five men given the responsibility of carrying the nuclear football for President Reagan. He recently recalled that at a time a colleague steered him into the different lift, tricking him into thinking he'd missed the motorcade. Metzger said that carrying the football was a worrying task. The result that the president would make is so grotesquely horrible it would change the face of the earth, it would change humanity, it would change mankind," said Metzger. Robert Patterson, who carried the football for Clinton, said, You're always kind of on edge. I opened it up constantly to check, to refresh myself, to be aware of what was in it, all the potential decisions the president could possibly make. Aides who carry the nuclear football have extensive psychological evaluation to assess whether they're up to the task. Metzger discloses that he underwent extensive vetting by the Defense Department, the Secret Service, and the FBI before he was given the job. Trump will undergo no such checks to his mental stability. There is, though, one consoling thought. Even if Trump did nuke Europe, he'd possibly spare a part of Aberdeen Shire. He wouldn't want to destroy his golf resorts.